Oh, it's time. Time to get radical. Your discretion is advised. Welcome to Radical Comet of the Week for November 29th through December 5th, 2021. These are the very best comments from that time period. Starting out with the honorable mentions, we got Hayton Puds, Coriander Corianders, and MBK Silent. Silent Night. Holy. Okay, I'll stop singing. The bronze medal today is going to come to us from World of Retro Gameplay. Hey, Radical Rick. I'm a longtime subscriber. I haven't commented in some time, but after watching this video, I felt compelled to. You mentioned something about struggling and falling into a repetitious cycle of producing the same content. In addition, you also said you would never want half a million subscribers. Are you concerned that you would fall into a repetitious cycle if you had that many subscribers? Maybe also due to a larger audience demanding the same content consistently. I've seen this before with other YouTubers. They feel like they will lose their large subscriber base if they don't produce the same content that attracted their subscribers in the first place. Do you feel this could be the main reason for most larger channels stagnating or only some of them? I don't know about other channels uh, and stagnation. Do you mean like stagnation, uh, them not gaining subscribers or a lot of interest not being ignited on the channels? Hmm. Well, I can only like talk about in reference to my own channel. And I would say, uh, as far as the numbers go, like I don't really care about the numbers unless they get to be staggering. There were periods in 2019 to where trying to upkeep this channel and just keep up with everything and to keep up with the numbers and the commenters and the new subscribers and everything that was going on, it... You always think, you always think that you want to get on YouTube and you want the most subscribers and you want the most, the most, you want the most interaction. But then what happens is you get that, you get that. And then at the time it was fun, me and Kenny and everything. It was a fun period 2019 at times. And most of the time I would probably look at all the growth and to be honest, I had a lot of that growth because I happened to be a person that grasped onto the feelings that a lot of people had about, you know, gaming and YouTube, uh, gaming YouTubers specifically. And I would speak out against uh, some games and some scummy things like microtransactions. I would talk about game collecting. There was a lot of things that kind of like a lot of topics that kind of came from originally uh, talking about you know, gaming YouTubers. And I think what happens is there are some people that might subscribe because they get the wrong impression that, okay, you're going to be that guy that always talks about like DSP gaming. You know, I see you upload something about DSP gaming. So I need you to be that guy to say the same things about DSP gaming every single day, but you know, maybe say it in slightly a different way. So it keeps me entertained. Right? Like, there's a lot of things about this comment here, World of Retro Gameplay, that uh, I could be talking for 10, 20 minutes, but I got to cut this short, all right? So, when it comes to growing a channel, once you do something that takes off, there will be people that stop by and they expect that over and over and over again. And for me... I would say there have been different periods in the channel's growth overall in history where I can point to and say, okay, there's people that maybe wanted me to talk about like The Walking Dead back in 2018. And then after that, uh, I talked about Metal Jesus. He's a YouTuber and his basement link. And then what happens is you have all these people that come by, even your non-related uh, videos on Metal Jesus, and they would say, hey, basement link. I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm the guy that exposed him. Uh-huh. Can we talk about other things though? And it would get like a little bit aggravating because, uh, for some people that would be okay. That'd be fine because their only skill or quality would be maybe exposing one or two YouTubers. And that's pretty much all they're good for. But it gets frustrating because I'm a person that has a lot of skill that's even developed here over the years. 
And I'm pretty great at talking about almost anything now, but it gets frustrating when there's people that only maybe might stop by and only want to talk you to talk about YouTubers or a specific YouTuber. And to me, in a way, that's kind of an insult, actually, whereas other channels, they'd be perfectly fine. You know, they would stand up, they would see their subscriber numbers hit from doing like one thing, or it could be talking about maybe the SJW stuff or maybe some car companies or I don't know, whatever it is you talk about, uh, good or bad. There's all different kind of channels here on YouTube is what I'm saying. Damn it. I didn't mean to go that long. There's all these great, great channels on YouTube and bad channels on YouTube and they might be gaining subscribers and numbers for different reasons. But I'm a person that actually sits down and goes, okay, what am I doing that is going to make me happy and I'm going to be content with? And it happens to be the case that, oh, I don't know. I'm not personally content with stopping my personal growth. Hey, there's a good one. Personal growth and commentary and confusing that for channel growth. Fact of the matter is, World of Retro Gameplay, I could keep growing and keep growing and keep growing and possibly never stop by just giving people exactly what they want. But that's kind of boring to me. Moving on to the silver medal, that comes to us from Red Stratus 97. Hey, Radical Rick. I doubt you care about this, but I just thought I'd mention it to you. I've been visiting other channels lately that have talked about you. I found out that the mass disliker not long ago was really a combination of Turbo Joe fans and Darius Truxton fans. The TJ fans came to mass dislike you due to TJ doing a video on you that many claim to bear you. I personally, however, see the difference between ad money you get from YouTube and asking people for money known as e-begging. But many people on TJ's YouTube don't see it that way and praise TJ for his barrier love you. Whatever I know. Now apparently DT's YouTube fans came to support you at first but then found out in a prior video that you said something negative about DT which then led to them turning against you as well. So the result was uh, the mass dislikes from both of fans of uh, all their fans until the dislike feature got removed. Just thought I'd share this news with you. However, I'm not sure how much you care about this at all. Well, on the realm of things I don't care about, uh, this would probably be high because I don't know, like through periods of the channel, I've had mass dislikers here and there, you know, if anything, uh, it was something for me to talk about, an easy thing for me to talk about and to commentate on where I'm like, okay, I just got home from work. So I could just talk about this because it was actually happening on the channel. And, you know, we had some interesting uploads that happened and some conversations. So I don't know. Uh, when it comes to you, uh, okay, you said that I don't know if you care about this. Well, regardless of whether I care about it or not, it was the silver medal. Uh, it was the second best comment, I think, during that week. And, you know, I'm obligated to talk about it a little bit per this show. So uh, there is that. If the second best comment was about Sailor Moon or, you know, baby dolls or like uh you know so what's some other things that i have no interest in oh the view you know that show with all the uh, older women if if the silver medalist was about the view then guess what i would have to talk about the view per this show uh so yeah you have combinations of fans from different youtubers people that claim that they bury me uh, i've listened to some of these through the years and not one single person has quote buried me like, I'm the person that buries other people. And it's not even that, like, I am the best barrier in the world. It's just as simple. I hold people to certain standards. And it's not that hard for me to actually highlight people and prove that they are trash people. So sometimes as simple as that and everything. Uh, now, there's always going to be people that will come here and dislike me. For different reasons but if you dislike me let it be for the right reasons let it be because you're a simp or not that smart or maybe you're easily triggered you know i mean i guess that's all i got because i really wasn't that super interested in this one but you know props on being the silver medalist there restaurant 97 okay the shiny shiny gold medal comes to us from arioka 
Rick, I believe the pioneer in e-bagging regarding retro gaming channels on YouTube was Classic Games Room. Rename 80s Comics. Mark Bushler, who was always portraying himself as a fun and friendly person, was accepting video games and consoles, a.k.a. donations. Shall I read the rest of this like Mark Bushler? From his viewers for him to make hobby video reviews, at one point his channel was so big that he employed a staff to help him out and made a separate channel for them. He also rented a warehouse that was stacked of arcade cabinets and video games from floor to ceiling. Many, if not most, were gifted from his audience. Stupid idiots. I added that part, you know, it's not part of your comment here. If you check some of CGR older videos, he even shows each donator proudly at the end of the video, pinning them on a world map showing from what country they're from in a very sarcastic manner. Almost as if he was thinking, look at what this sucker from Qatar just sent me. For example, Mark was doing all of his e-begging a long time ago, about a decade prior to CJR opening a Patreon in 2016. In my opinion, channels like John Hancock, The Game Chasers, and Beat 'em Ups learned from CGR that it's an acceptable behavior to have a P.O. box to constantly receive expensive video games from free from some of their naive subscribers. What else does he say? I don't know. What's his saying? Does he have like sayings? I, I just remember like that's I think how he sounds. Maybe it's not accurate. I'm not sure. Uh, but. You make a strong case for this Mark guy being a pioneer of e-bagging. This comes to us from this stupid simp over here. <laughs> That's getting better, I think. Uh, but yeah, so Mark does have that uh, channel, and he had that for a long time. He turned it into 80s comics. And I don't know if he begs up comics from people, meaning he gets donations of comics from people. I'm not sure. You know, it's called 80s Comics. Does he get donations of 80s Comics? It wouldn't surprise me. So, you said he had all these arcade cabinets, had all these games, and he just proudly said that they were donated from such and such. Proudly, as if he wasn't just an e-beggar. Because what he should say is, This item I paid for from Jim in Texas. I mean, it wouldn't be that hard. Because... The thing about shaming somebody is it isn't it okay talking about pioneers and e-bagging retro gaming channels yeah you make an argument for classic games room who is now 80s comics mark bursley uh was always portraying himself as a fun and friendly person yeah you know the weird thing is when it comes to e-beggars someone can look at dsp gaming and he doesn't really come across as like a very fun, charismatic person because he's not. He comes across like an e-beggar, someone that just wants your money. But what happens is, is Mark Busley, I'm an e-beggar too. I'm just a little bit smooth about it. And because I have this wonderful, charismatic, sparkling voice, people will send me things. This situation here is kind of scummy i'm kind of scummy by accepting these game donations from people and putting these pins on a map to make sure that people feel like they need me need to send me some more games or else i wouldn't review anything but people get the impression that i need these to talk about and do reviews for a couple minutes which admittedly is not that difficult it's me talking over a little bit of gameplay footage but thanks for sending me the game so I can just talk about it for a couple minutes. I'm probably going to wind up reselling this game after I do the review. Oh, uh, was that entertaining? I'm not sure. A uh, friendly person. Yeah, he seems like a friendly person, a fun person. Seems like that on the videos. But, you know, I've seen interviews with him and he seems kind of like a prick, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of things I've heard about this guy. But there's always these stories. There's stories behind, uh, beyond the YouTube. And you said he rented a warehouse that was stacked with arcade cabinets and video games, a lot of which he didn't pay for. Well, there you go. There's the business. You know, the business for a lot of the business for that channel doesn't sound like it was actually for the business 
of ad revenue and making money off the YouTube videos. It was not for that business. It was the business of getting lucrative, expensive arcade cabinets and video games sent to him. So, I mean, who knows if he has that P.O. box, what kind of stuff is sent to him, what kind of items is sent to him. That's part of the business of YouTube with the P.O. box. So John Hancock, the Game Chaser, beat em ups they learn from people like Mark Bursley that, hey, it's acceptable. The more time goes on, I am cut a path for your e-begging. I made it acceptable for you, beat em ups to get uh, donations from sick children. That was me. So all of you, Hancock, Game Chasers, beat em ups please give some respect to one of the innovators, the pioneers in e-begging, Mark Bischler.